Welcome back to Pokemon and Sap. This series explores a theoretical collaboration between Sap and Pokemon, now with many Gen 2 Pokemon and another new archetype. Starting off, Wooper is a small fan favorite from the swamps of Pokemon. While this water type can be pretty weak, it has its uses. In Sap, Wooper is a tier 1, which gives a random shop pet extra health or attack depending on if it's an odd or even turn. It is the tier 1 entry into a shop scaling archetype that will be quite prevalent as this becomes a full expansion pack rather than a few custom pack additions. Wooper is useful as an early way to choose what pets you want to grab or to scale an early pet like Bulldog which benefits from higher stats more than other pets. Drifloon is a small ghost type balloon Pokemon known to drift through the skies and possibly even attempt to take children, although they supposedly aren't strong enough. Drifloon in Sap builds off this drifting nature as an ailment archetype pet. Drifloon, after any attack, will move ailments on your team towards the enemy one, two, or three spaces at a time. This can be good and bad depending on the situation. The benefit is of this over Frigate Bird is that it will give the ailments to the enemy, while the detriment is that a traveling ailment can remove a friendly perk. A high level Drifloon can also drift ailments you start with on your team onto the enemy's team, like using Visitor for Exposed in the Shop. This sprite was made by Dune the Goon on my Discord, so thanks, pet ideas and even sprites can make it into these videos for my Discord, so go check that out if it interests you. Diglett is a small ground type Pokemon, which is always partially underground and no one knows what they look like below. It evolves into a Doug Trio, a trio of Diglets. In Sap, Diglett exists as the first part of the transformation archetype, as when three Diglets are on your team in the shop, they combine together to form a Doug Trio. Doug Trio, on Faint, summons three Diglets with greater and greater stats. This compacting summoner is a, an early source of a lot of summons if you make the space on your team to get it. Doug Trio works well with any summon enabler like Horse or Sea Turtle and can be pilled in the shop to farm transformations, which other pets will benefit from further down the line. Next up is a new tier 3 food perk, the Lepa Berry, with a very special ability. The berry prevents the start of battle ability from happening, instead making it happen before this pet's attack, once. There are many, many niche uses for this type of perk and its value scales with the value of the pet using it. This allows in-battle scaling to have an effect on the ability, or to allow this pet's ability to go off after a specific ability is already on off. The risk of this perk is that it has to be removed before the pet gets to attack, or the pet may faint before that, losing the value of the start of battle ability totally. If you're a sap veteran, you can probably see how such a perk can be used to great effect, like running a macaque on a team of 5 pets, or snipes going off after enemies are given ailments, or scaling a leopard in battle before it goes off. All of these are risky but inventive strategies that the Lepa Berry allows you to try. Wobbuffet is a goofy, tricky little psychic type Pokemon that often traveled with Team Rocket. It has a lot of moves that work as counterplay in Pokemon, and I used one such counterplay move for its ability in Sap. Wobbuffet on Faint gives the pet 1, 2, or 3 spaces ahead Parish Song, a new ailment which makes a pet faint after 3 friendly attacks. This delayed peanut effect isn't that great on a front unit, which would likely have fainted after 3 attacks anyways, but as it gets further back, this becomes much better. Wobbuffet does come with the ability to misfire if sniped, hitting a friend, but this could even go to your advantage if you have a Drifloon on your team. Cyndaquil is the fire type starter from generation 2 and is kind of like a shy, fiery hedgehog. While its evolutions get much scarier, Cyndaquil is a pet that would likely only lash out as a last resort. To play on this, Cyndaquil is used similarly as a defense mechanism, as when it faints it gives its attacker crisp. At 6 damage, Crisp is pretty noticeable at tier 3, but at the front unit, it's possible it could make no difference balancing it out. When Cyndaquil levels up, the Crisp goes to Worst and then Worst Crisp, which work 2 or 3 times respectively. That means it's not as simple as 12 or 18 damage snipes, but as multiple attacks have to go off first. Cyndaquil works well with pets like Manticore or Vampire Bat as typical pets that would benefit from enemy ailments, and is a strong choice in general for early tempo. Shuckle is a peculiar bug and rock type Pokemon, and another fan favorite. In the games, it is a highly defensive Pokemon, and I use this for its ability. Shuckle, for every 6 health it gains in battle, gives 1 extra gold at the start of the next turn. This works 2, 4, or 6 times in a turn, meaning this tier 3 could potentially produce 6 gold if properly implemented. 
This is double the other tier 3 gold counterpart of Weasel, but can be far less consistent. This synergizes well with gold builds such as Meerkat and Gazelle, and it necessitates in battle scaling like Camel, Gargoyle, or last episode's Bulbasaur in order to benefit from it. In general, it is nice to have an earlier gold generating alternative where you are rewarded for extra investment into it. Bayleaf is the second stage evolution of the grass type generation 2 starter Chikorita, a very friendly and gracious grass type. It also sports a strong, pleasant fragrance. In Sap, it is another piece of transformation synergy as it gives grapes, better grapes, or best grapes to a pet when it transforms. These better versions of grapes generate 2 or 3 gold instead of 1, which is a way to make an underutilized perk more worth it. Bayleaf is a good way to invest in your future with transformations, whether it would be with the Fountain of Youth food or transforming a pet like Eevee or Magikarp. It could also potentially work with perk pets like Axolotl. Keeping with the theme of transformation, no pet transforms quite like Ditto. Ditto is known as a Pokemon that can masquerade as anything and use their abilities. Obviously, this pet transforms, specifically it transforms before battle into the pet at the same position as it on the enemy team, keeping its own level and stats, but consuming its food perk. Without a food perk, Ditto can't transform. As the first pet with a before battle ability trigger, it can actually use start of battle abilities from the enemy team, a unique quirk of its ability. Ditto works well with transformation pets, more of which you'll see soon, as well as being an interesting investment in Versus, when you can select which pet you are interested in having. Muck is a poison type Pokemon, which is effectively a pile of sludge with a face. In fact, it's quite similar to the Abomination in Super Auto Pets. Muck's ability in Sap also mirrors Abominations in some ways, as it also swallows pets. When a pet is summoned that doesn't fit on your team, Muck swallows it and releases it on Faint at 3366 6, or 99. This quirky ability may be my favorite and can be used to get full values out of things like sheep or high level anteaters at the front of the team. It can also be used in a shop to permanently store a pet. It synergizes well with typical summon enablers like flying fish and turkey, and if it has swallowed too much, you can even use a second Muck to swallow what can't fit on the team from the first Muck's Faint. It would be super cool to have a pet that works with these ejected pets and to play with summon efficiency so pet order doesn't have to be so strict. With tier 4 comes a new perk. This is Applin, which is a suggestion from McMo on my Discord. Their idea was a perk that works as a pet, and Applin was perfect for this as a food and a Pokemon at the same time in the games. Applin works like Eevee does from the last video with a condition met trigger. There are three ways to transform Applin, replacing it with a perk will give you Appleton. Appleton is the apple pie Pokemon, and its contribution in Sap makes it stock a 3, 2, or 1 cost apple for every 2 times it is hurt in battle. This can turn hurt triggers into scaling at a cost of gold. Appleton can be a permanent fixture on your team if you replace an Applin's perk, or can transform in battle for the same effect. With this, it synergizes well with pets that can use their ability before transforming into Appleton, such as a dolphin or an armadillo. You can replace the perk in battle using something like Tar or Toucan, and obviously this is nice in combination with Jerboa. Flapple is what you get when you replace an Applin perk with an ailment. There are plenty of ways to do this, such as the Visitor, Microbe, or Wall Chicken. Flapple is similar to Appleton, but instead of every 2 hertz, it stocks an apple for every pet knocked out. This also comes at a discount, which is fair for a harder to activate ability. Flapple works well with an, the ailment and perk archetype in Puppy, where you can give everything weakness, then the Flapple either gets skewer or chilly in order to maximize knockouts. Hydrapple is what comes from an Applin pet when it is fed three apples, and the ability hinges on this. Hydrapple on Faint summons a 4 2, 8 4, or 12 6 Diplin for every two apples that is eaten the previous turn. Diplin is a new token pet with no ability, but it fits the theming of this pet as the summon. Hydrapple works well with any summon enabler, and while it clearly works in combination with Appleton and Flapple, it also works with things like Worm and Owl, contributing another Apple user in the Apple Micro archetype. Together, these Apple pets benefit from the transformation archetype, as well as working well with each other, although they likely need some enablers in order to truly shine. If you watched the last video, Eevee is a Pokemon that has conditions to be met in order to transform into other versions of itself. Last episode had Flareon, Jolteon, Vaporeon, and Leafeon, this episode has the final four evolutions. If three pets faint in the shop, Eevee will transform into Umbreon, the Dark-type Eevee. 
fitting with the darkness and its Anubis-like coloration, Umbreon benefits from Friends fainting, giving attack to pets that are summoned based on how many pets have fainted previously. While this version of Eevee is arguably fairly difficult to get, the payoff can be very worth it. This pet starts off worse than a regular Turkey, but can surpass it with investment or more summons. Good synergy with Umbreon is seen with things like Slug, Wolf, and Sheep, and any other pets that give a lot of faints. Another option for this is Mantis in order to farm fainted pets in the shop. Umbreon with heavy investment could possibly even surpass a German Shepherd in attack given. Glaceon is the ice type EV, and while other EVs you have to perform somewhat difficult tasks, with Glaceon you simply have to wait. If a pet has been frozen in the shop for three turns in a row, Eevee will transform into a Glaceon, a new shop scaling pet. Glaceon gives plus one plus one to a shop pet for every turn that it has been frozen, so while it starts as valuable as a dromedary, it can surpass a polar bear after not too long. This comes with the interesting decision of figuring out when you should buy the pet and start scaling another, which is the interesting gameplay that makes shop scaling such a fun mechanic in general. It synergizes well with anything that can get extra value out of its stats, and with a tier 6 we'll see later in this video. Sylveon is the fairy type Eevee and transforms from three transformations itself. This may seem hard, but three Diglets can actually fulfill this condition very easily. Sylveon is a tempo and mana pet, which gives extra value out of investing in transformations. It gives 6, 12, or 18 mana depending on its level, which means snipe damage of the same amount on faint. In chop, this amount goes away by half every turn, but in battle you get the full value of the mana every turn. Sylveon benefits from things like Magikarp and Ditto easily, but can also work with Water of Youth or Kanpeito in order to get this valuable boost to pet ability. Espeon is the final of the evolutions to date, the Psychic type Eevee. To get Espeon, you need to roll 9 times with an Eevee on your team, and it'll transform. Espeon is a very unique pet, with a passive effect rather than a trigger. Fitting with the Psychic theme, it knows 2, 4, or 6 of the upcoming shop items in the next roll, displaying them in the flavor text you get from mousing over or tapping on them like an anglerfish. This ability helps terminal rollers determine if they want to roll again, and can be a very key contributor to decision making when weighing the pros and cons of spending your gold on rolling. If items are frozen, it will prioritize displaying unfrozen units, and can work quite well with things like moose or ostrich, in which the tiers of specific pets are very influential in figuring out if you want to roll or not. And that is the last of the Eevees, which work as many conditions, one of which you may hit on accident, playing into the improvisational nature of Super Auto Pets. Don't worry though, the next Pokemon episode will have more pets sourced out of happenstance with this Pokemon. Now is also a good time to remind you that shiny Pokemon are a thing in this, just like in the games, with a 1 in 4,800 chance of showing up any time a Pokepet would. Magneton is the Magnet Pokemon, a strange floating device with one eye carrying a large amount of electrical charge. Magneton shares this charge in Zap, as when a friend transforms, Magneton gives 25, 50, or 75 of its attack to it. This ability allows you to run teams that benefit from a lot of transformations, or can be a powerful ally and a pivot from a lower tier to higher team using transforming pets or Kunpeito. It synergizes well with anything that transforms or transforms friends like the Basilisk, as well as attack giving pets like Manatee and Dodo, and with a shop scaler, Magneton can be a good choice of pet to start pouring stats into as you prepare for the late game. Porygon in Pokemon is a strange video game creature made out of a few polygons referencing early 3D models in games. In Sap, Porygon is a transformation archetype pet with an equally chaotic and quirky ability. If a friendly ability triggers, Porygon will transform it into a random pet from a higher tier, working with one, two, and three friends ahead. Without synergy, this pet is a bit of a gamble, as there's no telling whether or not the ability can be helpful at all in battle, but this pet really shines with synergy with things like Sylveon or Magneton, these transformations can be very, very strong. Porygon can be considered the Orca of transformations, and can be just the right choice for someone trying to pour all their effort into transformations, a fitting final entry in the archetype for this video. Feraligatr is the final of the Generation 2 starters, the third stage evolution of Totodile. This ferocious alligator Pokemon is a strong contender in battle, and benefits from being one in Zap. For every pet that Feraligatr knocks out in battle, it will buff a random frozen shop pet, allowing you to power scale other pets with a strong Feraligatr and some enemy summons. This ability is another entry into both the enemy summons and shop scaling archetypes that are prevalent in the Pokepack. This can also be used to self-scale your Feraligatr 
alligator if you scale one and combine it onto this, so should this ability exclude other for alligators? This synergizes well with things like chili or skewer and tar and sapping turtle respectively, or with things like fig or even chocolate cake to maximize knockouts in battle. Tyranitar is a towering, almost kaiju-like Pokemon in the games and shows, and is one of the most formidable Pokemon in this generation. One move it learns is Hyper Beam, which is its opening move in Sap. At the start of battle, Tyranitar will hit all tier 2, 4, or 6 or lower enemy pets, with 20% of its attack as damage. This means at maximum it can do 10 damage to each and 50 damage in total, and will hit absolutely everything at level 3 except the elusive tier 7 Mewtwo. Obvious synergies with Tyranitar is things like Tiger or Dodo to scale attack. This start of battle sniper follows Team Wood's puppy pack philosophy of rewarding a strong pivot and punishing keeping low tier pets on, on your team for too long, and is a perfect fit for the Tyrannic Tyranitar. Ho-Oh is a fire-flying type legendary Pokemon, the first Pokemon revealed of Generation 2 and the mascot for its games. It is also the supposed leader of the legendary Pokemon and often revealed itself to Ash from the series. Ho-Oh in Sap is very mechanical, benefiting a lot of different builds as when a pet depletes its perk or its perk is removed by an ability or an ailment, Ho-Oh gives this pet its own held perk from tier 2, 4, or 6 or lower. This only works twice in battle, but functions like a seagull without the need of summoning. The obvious usage is to use this like crane or wildebeest to replace armor after it is used, although this comes with a great risk, as if Ho-Oh is hurt at all, it can no longer distribute this armor. Another very powerful synergy comes with Tier 4's Lepa Berry, which makes start of battle abilities happen before attack instead once. This combination allows a start of battle pet's ability to trigger up to three times in battle, assuming it survives to get all the attacks off. With Ho-Oh, the synergies have almost endless potential, as so many perks deplete naturally anyways. It is truly a worthy role for the leader of the legendary Pokemon. Suicune is yet another legendary Pokemon, this time an ice type. It is a divine and elegant protector of the natural world and deeply magical, and also my favorite legendary Pokemon growing up. In Super Auto Pets, it is a cherry on top of the shop scaling archetype, summoning the leftmost shop pet at level 1, 2, or 3 with Suicune's own held food perk at the start of battle. This uses the current stats of that pet, which allows you to benefit from that pet that is being scaled in the shop. Now, the leftmost shot pet can only be summoned once, so it can't be the same pet every time with multiple Suicunes, but with things like Feraligator or Polar Bear, you can summon multiple pets for multiple Suicunes if that's what you're looking for. Suicune synergizes well with the previously mentioned shop scaling, as well as the four squad pets like Manta Ray and Llama. There are many inventive combos with this, like a Lepa Berry being used to summon in battle, meaning running a team of five, or, and even maybe summoning a start of battle pet, which would get the berry and go off in battle. Suicune is a pet with lots of possible utility, waiting to be explored and expanded on. And with that, part two of Pokemon is done. You can put your own suggestions on the Discord and vote for the next booster pack video there as well. Thanks so much for watching, this takes so much time and it is one of my favorite things to do. Next week's booster is up to you guys, so let me know on the poll on Discord. Have a great day!